Okay, so let's look at how to do question number 11. So what we have is, is, is an equation that's governing the flight path of a ball that's thrown, um, in this case, on a planet Jupiter, which um, planet's really irrelevant at this point, because what we're, we have this equation that's governing, governing how the flight path of a ball is when gravity is acting on it, okay, in this specific case. So if we draw a little picture and think about how a ball is, behaves when it's thrown through the air, okay, it rises goes to a certain maximum height and then falls back to the ground. So the height of the ball that the whole ball gets is essentially going to be the vertex of what we get is an, of an inverted parabola. Okay, And so one thing we can start to look at in this function here, um, they use this uh, notation, which in this case here is called h of t, which means what is the height of the ball dependent upon a certain time value t. Okay, so we've seen this equation before in terms of the vertex form of the equation, sorry, where we have um, y is equal to a x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so that's the standard vertex form for a parabola. So because a here is negative, negative 12.5, we know the parabola is opening downwards. So that would make sense because this is a, this is typical of how a, a flight path of an object that is acting where gravity is pulling it back down towards the surface of, uh, of the planet. So then we just need to know what our vertex is. So our vertex is simply given as h and k. So 0 0.4 and 4. So what actually is the maximum height value? Which of those two numbers refers to the maximum height? Well, the first number is the, um, the x coordinate, okay? And the, in this case, it's actually the t value. So this refers to time. And then the four is the product or the result of that height, which is h of t. Okay, so time is at 0 0.4 seconds, the height becomes four meters. So the max height, okay, h of t at four seconds is equal to four meters. That's what we get out of the vertex um, coordinate. Okay, so that's simply all that we're looking to do here. Now, question B, it says, what, of the, what is the height of the ball when it was released from the thrower's hand? So when the ball is released, Okay, so what we need to understand is that when the ball is released, what is the time that, um, that corresponds to that? So that actual time is equal to t equals zero. Okay, so what we're really looking to do is find the height of the ball at time zero. So h, um, h of zero. Okay, so we plug that number into our equation, t equals zero and we just evaluate the expression. So it's gonna be negative 12.5 times zero minus uh, 0 0.4 all squared. Okay, so that's just gonna give you negative 0.4 squared plus four. So we'll put that into your calculator. You know, remember to square the term and then multiply by negative 12.5. You will find the answer here should be equal to roughly two meters. Okay, so that means the height of the ball when it's first released at time t0, okay, the height is equal to two meters. And then the third question says, how many seconds after the ball was hit did it land on the surface of Jupiter to the nearest second? Okay, so this means the ball was hit, it rises, and then eventually it falls back um, to the ground. So what, what does that correspond to in the equation? So what we're really looking at here is we're looking at to know what is the time when the height of the ball, okay, goes back to being zero, okay? Or in this case, h of t is equal to zero. So we're essentially, we're just setting the equation to be equal to zero and then solving for the value of t. Okay, so this is a little bit more, a little bit more complicated than part B because we have this square term here which we're gonna have to kind of work through. But we can subtract four on both sides, okay, to get it down to, remember we're isolating T here. Okay, then I need to divide by 12.5 or negative 12.5 on both sides. Okay, so that's going to give me t minus 0 0.4 all squared is equal to 
0 0.32. Okay, and then we take the square root of both sides. So we're going to have t minus 0 0.4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 30, 0.32. Okay, so we essentially going to have a couple of values here you want to work through. Um, so I can add, let me just bring this up to the top here. So again, we're going to isolate t, so I have to add 0 0.4 to both sides. So it's going to be 0 0.4 plus or minus the square root of 0 0.32. Okay, so we're going to end up with two values here. Now, what you for time, time in these equations should not be negative, so you're going to be looking for uh, the positive value. So when we look at the only solution that works here, we're going to see it's about 0.97 seconds, okay? It'll be the positive, we'll take the square root of 0.32 and then we'll add it to 0.4. Um, so what we don't want is no negative values, okay? Because a negative time doesn't correspond to anything in a kind of a physical sense. Okay, so this means that it lands, okay, in 0 0.97 seconds. Okay, so that's how you work through the, the algebra or the, and, the, and the quantities for both of these questions. Now, I'm just going to show you one other way to, to look at this problem using a graphing tool. Okay, and it's just going to go back to the original question here. So all of these properties that were asked in this question, we can actually look and, and, and find them from the plot of a graph. Okay, so the only thing is that that's a fairly hard uh, equation to plot manually because it's, it's got a lot of decimals and fractions, but we could use a software tool. Um, so either your graphing calculator or we can use another tool here that I like to use, it's called Desmos. So you can <clears throat> go online and just type in desmos.com and you can just go in right away and get a, a, this, this graphing tool and it's also available for as an app for, for different tablets. So the way it works is once you open it up, you have like a little place where you can type in math equations. Okay, so h of t equals negative 12.5 times t minus 0 0.4 squared plus 4. All that is equal, we can substitute that as our traditional y equals x equation. Okay, so we can go, um, we just want to graph the, the equation as y is equal to, and I can just start typing that in, negative 12.5, okay, and then I can put the brackets in. Now, instead of t, we're just going to use x, because that's going to be the, the independent variable. Okay, minus 0 0.4, close the brackets, and then we have a square function here, so we're going to square that, and then we add 4. Okay, and then so what happens instantly is we get a plot of this parabola. So I'm just going to move the, the graph here down so we can see it. Okay, so this is the parabola that is given in that question. Now, interestingly, all the, the things that were asked, we can just read off the graph. <clears throat> so for example, what is the maximum height? Well, if I touch the very top of the parabola, and... Um, you, it'll lock a point in there and it will show you that the point is 0 0.4 and 4. So remember the x-axis corresponds to time, t, and this says that at 0.4 seconds the max height is 4. Okay, so that was the answer to question A. Question B said when time is equal to 0, what is the height of the ball? Well, when time is equal to 0, so 0 is along the x-axis, that's actually just going to be the y-intercept. So at time zero, okay, that's the first coordinate zero, the height is already at two meters. So that's the, that's the value that you get for that, for that second part. And then question C said, what is the number of seconds when the height returns back to the ground and being equal to zero? So that means the y-axis, you need to have a value of zero. Okay, so if you look, there's actually two points here. So the one we calculated, when the height is zero, so that's the second number, we get the first number of 0.966 or 0.97 seconds. That's when the ball returns back, and that's the positive root. Now remember in the question I said we were going to throw out all the negative roots, but mathematically there was a negative value um, that you could extend backwards, um, which we don't use because we're not time for us starts at the zero point, okay, and moves forward, but there wasn't a root that we threw out which was at negative 0 0.166. So that just corresponds to a different 
um, case of the equation or a different physical setup of it. Okay, so those are the three values that you can get f directly from the graph if you understand what, what that parabola is telling you as, as it moves through. So there's either way you can do it, two ways to do it. You can do it directly from a graph or you can just go back and do it directly from um, the equation and just start working through the math. Okay, so that's how I would look at this question um, and hopefully that clears up uh, any questions you have about it.